After being released way back in 2020, the Intel Core i3-10100F has amassed quite a bit of attention over its $90 price tag and quite a bit of criticism over a poor decision on Intel's part to cap the memory speed at 2066 MHz. Even with all this, you have to appreciate the performance you're able to get out of such a cheap chipset, and especially now in 2022, the fact that it's been able to keep its $90 price tag is very impressive. Welcome back to Hardwired Review everybody, I am Nate, and in this video we're going to be seeing if the Intel Core i3-10100F is still a good deal when compared to Intel's current lineup, and we're going to be seeing what type of gaming performance you can expect to get from such a cheap chipset such as this. Let's get into it. So with the 10100F being so cheap, I really feel like the price tag is kind of the main selling point of this CPU, and I feel like for it only being $90, a lot of buyers will look over the specs and assume because it's cheap and it's a 10th gen quad core processor, it's automatically a decent buy. And while there is some truth in that, this does offer some great value for the price, most of the specs in reality aren't that glamorous. It has 4 cores, 8 threads, no integrated graphics which sets this apart from the regular 10100, and a 3.6 GHz clock speed which has a boost speed which goes all the way up to 4.3 GHz. So don't worry, not everything is necessarily mediocre. That's a decently high boost speed for a CPU of this price. Now the high boost speed will produce a very snappy experience overall, which I've definitely felt in my use of this processor. But you'll also have to keep in mind it won't keep up for the less than optimal core count of only four. Four cores in 2022 is kind of on the low end. Most games nowadays ideally require six cores for the optimal performance. But because this is a budget CPU, I think a lot of buyers are just going to upgrade to a 10th or 11th gen higher end processor in the future. So I think the future proof problem that we're seeing with the four cores isn't really going to come into effect. Now because this CPU is 2 years old now, and most 11th and 12th gen Intel processors have already come out, it begs the question, is this still kind of the best bang for your buck processor when it comes to Intel CPUs still in 2022? Well if we take a look at this graph here, comparing performance benchmarks of this CPU compared to its 12th gen successor, the i3-12100, we can see that it is a fair bit behind in terms of performance. But you also have to keep in mind that the 12100 goes for $50 more, which ends up being a lot when you're dealing with something that's less than $100 to begin with. Additionally, it has nearly identical specs. But more importantly when it comes to the i3-12100, it uses LGA 1700 as opposed to 1200 with 10th and 11th gen Intel processors. So that means that motherboards are going to be more expensive and also harder to find because 12th gen has just been released. So you're going to end up spending a lot more in addition to spending more on the CPU, you're going to end up spending a lot more in terms of accessories. Coming at this from the perspective of a budget buyer, I wouldn't be worried about the less than great benchmarking scores with the 10100F because like I said, the money you will have to spend when everything is all said and done to get the 12100 just doesn't justify the performance increase. That comes into play a bit more when we consider gaming, as most budget builders aren't going to be using very powerful graphics cards, so CPU bottlenecking, if it occurs at all, will be very insignificant in most cases. For reference, I have the GTX 1650, and I think that's kind of like the low end slash mid range and kind of the target I think most budget builders are looking for when it comes to GPU performance. And in all the games I tested, CPU bottlenecking was very minimal. Even when I tested very, very CPU intensive games, the bottleneck was only around 5% which is barely noticeable and you'll only end up dropping a handful of frames. A couple of examples of games that are very CPU intensive and games that I noticed in my testing caused a bit of a CPU bottleneck were Valorant and Rainbow Six Siege. Keep in mind these are literally the only two examples from the list of games I tested, so it's not a widespread issue across the board and it's not something you're going to really have to worry about when you're thinking about buying the 10100F. To give you a consolidated summary of all the games I tested with this CPU and GPU pair up, here's a little graph showing all the games I tested as well as the relative average FPS I got in each game. I'll also be comparing this to the slightly more powerful but far more expensive Ryzen 5 1600 that I use and that is also going to be paired with the 1650 so you can see how those CPUs stack up. 
The 1600 is around $200 now, so that'll give you a good guide as to why Intel is kind of the better route nowadays when it comes to CPUs. And honestly, I think both performances in terms of gaming are very, very comparable. The 10100F and 1650 pair up that I have would be, if it weren't for the whole GPU problem, the kind of the best of the best budget CPU and GPU pair up for gaming, but because we know that budget really isn't even in the vocabulary of most people who are buying GPUs nowadays, that's just not feasible for most buyers. Take the GPU out of the picture though, and you're still getting a CPU in the i3-10100F that is powerful enough to allow for 60 FPS 1080p gaming for only $90. And I know I've said this a lot, but I really can't stress this enough. That is honestly unheard of in the current market. However, before we go naming this the budget king of Intel CPUs, I do want to address the fairly serious issue that I talked about a bit at the beginning of this video. And that has to do with the memory speed cap of 2066 megahertz that Intel decided to put on this CPU. It's more disappointing when you find out that Intel could easily make this CPU compatible with more RAM speeds pretty much instantaneously because everything is in place to allow it to do so. They just decided to cap it for literally no reason other than that this is a budget CPU. I don't like that. I think it's a very bad move on Intel's part, but considering all the other great things that this CPU has going for it, I don't think it should really tarnish the reputation that this CPU has as the I'm going to say it, budget king of Intel CPUs. All right, everybody, that's it for this video. I've got more great content coming up very soon. Stay tuned for that. I know I say that a lot, but I've always got more content coming out, always making new stuff. And if you did enjoy this video, like it down below, subscribe, comment any feedback that you might have for me. And if you do want to buy the Intel Core i3 10100F, it will be linked in the description down below. Thank you all so much for checking this video out. And I'm Nate with Hardwired Review, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.